Okay, so um, I wanted to ask you specifically about kind of young people in St. Helens and mm -hmm. what you feel that they have to gain with engaging with the world of glass, um, but also maybe more generally about kind of how you feel that you could maybe impact um, the aspirations of young people within the town. Yeah, okay. Well, young people are <clears throat> crucial to the town, aren't they? And you know, <clears throat> coming from an educational background, I'm, I'm just pro-young people, and young people get such a bad press, don't they? And, and we know that the majority of young people are incredible and inspirational and, and amazing. Um, and when we work with young people here, we just have a fab experience. So um, I had some students came recently because they wanted to talk about um, asking questions about how it was, how you put exhibitions together and what was the drivers behind that. And when you start explaining the business, business model and the things that you have to think about, they got really, really interested in that, you know. And then I took them into the glass blowing and said, why don't you have a look at sort of the unique bit that we do here. And they came out really inspired. And, and I absolutely love that because I think that's a, it's a traditional artisan skill that still is absolutely incredible to anybody that watches it. You know, you're manipulating something that's hotter than a volcano uh, and you're just using a, bit, a newspaper, a wet newspaper, it's amazing. So I think when we get young people into the building, it just kind of speaks to them. It's an impressive building as well when you come in. It's the, the big ceilings, the, the vastness of it. It feels quite impressive when you come in and then you sort of get a glimpse of the chandelier. And so it's kind of quite an inspiring space, isn't it? Um, that's our problem, is getting those young people in to inhabit the spaces. You know, you, you, you put exhibitions together of their work but I, I, I'm acutely aware that those people come just once to see their work and then don't come back again. So it's about building a programme of things that interest them, isn't it? And that's sort of what we're working on at the moment. So we're working on our educational programmes, we're working on our exhibition programmes, and so that we're, we've got an interesting role of things that can keep pulling those people in. And I had um, a young girl recently um, on the Duke of Edinburgh programme needed to do some work placement and she came here and she absolutely loved it and it was a really good thing for that young person because this building sort of gave them everything they needed. It's quite a calming space, isn't it? Um, and she was able to get experience of not only because she came just at the right point, so she got experience of putting gallery up, uh, an exhibition up, working in the shop working in the museum and then also working in the cafe and actually she really enjoyed working in the cafe which was a surprise because she'd said to me she kind of really loved heritage but the busyness of the cafe and interacting with the customers was the bit that she was like can I work in the cafe again tomorrow <laughs> so I think sometimes those things are, I've got a, a young lad who helps out as well he volunteers and he's doing um, a woodworking course and so he's helping with the maintenance team and that's been really, really great as well, to give those opportunities to, I just wish we could do something with glass blowing. Yeah. You know, where we could give a young person an opportunity to learn to be a glass blower, but that's proven more difficult to, to sort that out. There just doesn't seem to be any schemes where we're able to do that. I met with the chamber again today about that, and it might well be that we're able to do a short course, maybe for a young adult or something. Yeah, because I remember um, from when I worked at um, Priestley College that um, there was somebody who came here to gain work experience yeah. on the glass blowing. Yeah, and I think that bit's possible. So it's possible to do a little bit of work experience, but to put together a meaningful apprenticeship or something like that is, is proven more difficult. And that's what I'd absolutely love to do that because there's so few glass blowers, yeah. and it's such an amazing absolutely amazing job um, so yeah you know I'm aware that we, we've got to change what we do and that's part of the reimagining at the moment there isn't enough to keep certainly younger children interested not enough to keep uh, teenagers interested so we've got to change the way we tell those stories you know kids are so used to now having media on their, their fingertips a really interesting media you know and if you don't like it you go you go to the next one don't you you just keep flicking and so we've we've got to make our content as a museum appealing to those kids 
and the days of having cabinets with bits of writing in, it just doesn't cut it anymore. And, and it shouldn't, you know, we've got to work hard, haven't we, at what we do. And I think what's really important is when we do it this time, so we're, we're, we're looking at spending all this money reimagining the museum, we need to make sure that we build in the future as well. So, you know, in five years time, if you come back to this museum and it's the same with a failed, so we need to build in a, a cost-effective way of changing some of those exhibits so they feel fresh and they feel new. <clears throat> and that's quite interesting because uh, the, um, the creative directors have put in this kind of idea that we should have a space in, in the museum that's a now space. And that can constantly be changing, can't it? And not just about the industry in St. Helens now, but maybe some of those stories of people in St. Helens right now ordinary people or people who are doing interesting things in music or dance or art or photography <clears throat> or crafting you know um, so yeah I'm really keen to see if we can make that work Brilliant. and looking kind of really kind of a bit more long term maybe kind of 10 years time um, how do you see it what do you think unique kind of definable things um, would you like to see kind of more long term Okay, so um, that's quite easy for me to answer that because at the moment there's things that are at risk. So the um, Victorian furnace on Friday, it went on the at-risk register with Historic England. So, and that was quite a, a, an odd thing because I know it's not my fault because I wasn't here when that, that building was subsiding and um, but I've come and I've realised that we need to do something about that and so Historic England that the lady I've been working with she said she'd, she'd never delivered that news to somebody so excited to hear it <laughs> because I just felt actually somebody's listened and now I'll be able to go and get help from people and say, this is why I need your help to protect this incredible asset. You know, so we've got one of the world's first regenerative furnaces that's still intact with the tunnels underneath, which kids love running through, as you know. And we need to protect that. So in 10 years time, I want to see that that building hasn't shut down, that that building is actually a community space where we are taking groups of asylum seekers or young people or uh, people with dementia and we're using those spaces to interact with people We've got a beautiful canal side set in you know working with with families that don't have garden spaces uh, and we're using the heart of that's the whole reason why the world of glass is here because of that building because that was the heart of manufacturing um, you know St Helens is the story of innovation 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 so I have to protect that, so in 10 years' time, I just want to see that as not being uh, the cold bit over there that's falling down. I want to see that as absolutely the heart of what we do, and, I, and I'm sure that we can create really meaningful stories in that building that people love. So for me, the 10-year plan would be that, and it would be a museum that's just full of young families and um, families who come back week after week after week because there's something really great to do with the kids free but at the same time I hope they buy a coffee and a cake <laughs> and spend some money in the shop but that's yeah genuinely that's 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 what I hope and I hope that it's it's still really in it because the people that know about the world of glass love it don't they yeah and they, they really get a feel for it and I just hope in 10 years time the whole borough loves it and appreciates it and um, uses it.